I don't know how it does it, but Happy Sugar Life manages to get more fucked up with every single episode. Number one lesson I learned from this episode, don't mess with Shio if Sato is around. If you mess with Shio when Sato is around, you get your eyes gouged out. This is the type of episode you want to watch if you don't want to get any sleep at night. Some pretty big things are revealed in this episode of Happy Sugar Life, such as that weird, creepy vision that Shio keeps on seeing is apparently her super overprotective mother, who's honestly just as horrifying as most of the other characters in the series. After seeing this, Shio ends up passing out, and these two bullies look like they're actually going to try and take her to the police to get some sort of reward, or maybe even bait out her brother because they're dicks and they just want to beat this guy up. Luckily, Sato shows up and absolutely makes fools out of these guys, using her seductive abilities to try and bring them in close. She then proceeds to tase them, beat them over the head with her bag filled with bloody instruments, and then quite literally gouges their eyes out. They don't show it in excruciating detail, but the actual camera angle they use of like seeing it from a POV perspective of a knife going into your eye, suddenly the entire screen being enveloped by blood, it's definitely one of the most striking images that I've seen from the entire series. The rest of the episode dives into the pool of psychological drama as we get to see that Shio is completely wrecked. While she's a happy child on the outside, she's incredibly confused with these constant visions of her mother, and she even seems to go into these weird catatonic states where she can't control herself, where she's drawing on the walls, in particular a picture of her very own mother. And the way that it's actually pictured with her just being deep in the closet, hiding it all from the clothes, and everything, it's a very disturbing image, and it's very clear that she is just completely broken, but has no way of dealing with it at all. The only thing good in her life is Sato, who continues to treat her like a loving mother. Originally, at the beginning of the series, I thought that there might be something sexual between the two characters, uh, but it doesn't appear that that's going on, at least yet anyway. It's still a little disturbing in the fact that you have this teenage girl who has stolen this child and is keeping her in an apartment which is filled with body parts and blood, so in that sense, it's still very disturbing, but it is kind of nice to see these moments when this character doesn't have to deal with all of this creepy stuff around her. It's weird how they can go from that to the immediate terror of the series. The rest of the episode follows Sato as she goes about her normal life going to school, making sure that her old professor isn't going to try out anything creepy, which is really funny and very disturbing. We also get to see her go back to work, where her other co-workers are apparently obsessed with her as well. One in particular, who at the end of the episode is actually opening up her locker at work and smelling her clothes. What's also really creepy is that she also has made her hair look just like Sato's, so this girl is completely obsessed with her, and again just showing that everybody in this series is absolutely fucked. So what's the rundown on this episode of Happy Sugar Life? If it was any question whether Sato had the ability to physically hurt people, well, it's been revealed in this episode right here. She had no problem in jabbing knives into the eye sockets of young teenagers, and Whew, that scene was just really disturbing to say the least. I absolutely loved the pacing of that scene as well, how it slowly built up to this massive crescendo of violence. It was disturbing, but then again, so is the entire series. It sort of wears it on its sleeves, this show. What I also really loved about this episode was finally getting to see just a little bit of levity for just a couple moments. Sometimes the series can feel so oppressive in the uh, moods and tones that it's actually trying to give to the viewer, so any moment of respite is something that I really appreciate. And whether it be just a small goofy moment between Sato and her friends at school or at work, or even just her and Shio just acting kind of normal for just a couple of seconds, I appreciate that because the entire show is absolutely mired in extreme violence and psychological tension. Uh, again, though, that's honestly what kind of makes the show kind of addicting, and you really just want to see what's going to be happening next in the series. It's also so annoying how Shio's brother is always just this far away from his sister, never manages to find her. I can't wait to learn a little bit more about him, his backstory, and I also think it's really funny that just like uh, his little sister, he also has one of those distinctive anime fangs. I don't know why characters have those in anime, it's just a tropey thing. What is important to know is that in this episode, it proved that Sato is willing to go over the edge to hurt people. It's already been sort of implied in this episode right here that the body parts that were actually in those bags in her apartment 
might have actually belonged to her aunt. Something could have happened to actually push her over the edge, and she was forced to kill her and get rid of the evidence. I don't know why that is, but slowly but surely, they're building up a little bit more to uh, what her aunt's deal is. I'm curious as to really what fully happened with her parents as well. I mean, there's a whole lot of crazy shit that could be going on with this girl's backstory. Also, wow, Tayo Mitsuboshi is so freaking stupid. He's still living with his parents, but he's got these posters of Shio pasted all over his room like a friggin' psychopath. And his parents could just bust it at any second. They're like, uh, this is a little weird, son. It's moments like these that actually make this show kind of funny at times, too, when you look at it from a certain point of view. Otherwise, this was another episode that completely sucked me in with its dark storytelling and wanting to know what could potentially happen by the end of this series. I don't know if it's going to have a happy ending or not, but I'll be there at the end to see how it all wraps up. This episode right here, though, was another solid addition to the series, which I honestly have no complaints with, so I'm going to give it another 5 out of 5, another super entertaining and creepy episode of Happy Sugar Life. So, you heard my thoughts on the episode. I'd love to get yours. Tell me all of them in the comment section below and what you guys are hoping to see from the rest of Happy Sugar Life. Thank you guys for watching this review. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, stay down now, baby.